So what I like about this problem is not only are we going to practice being able to multiply two binomials with radicals, we're also gonna get some practice, I know you love, of simplifying our radical expressions. So that all comes into applying the operation and then simplifying. So this is a great review to kind of go over a couple things that we need to make sure we know how to do. First of all, we need to apply the distributive property. We have a binomial times a binomial. You can see they're separated by addition and subtraction. So therefore, we're just going to multiply everything by everything. Now, of course, you could go ahead and use FOIL, whatever else, but hopefully you just kind of see this diagram here by this is going to be applying the distributive property. Now, remember, when you're multiplying radicals together, as long as the index is the same, which you can see these are all square roots, all you're simply going to do is rat multiply the radicand times the radicand. Then what we'll do is we'll combine like terms, if there are any, and then as well as simplify at the very, very end. So square root of 3 times square root of 7, that's going to be a square root of 21, a positive square root of three times a negative, so therefore that's gonna be a negative square root. So whatever we do, we keep index the same, but notice that's a positive and that's a negative, so therefore that's why it's a negative. These two are both positive. And then we're gonna multiply a three times a two x cubed. Again, you can only multiply the three times a two, so that's gonna be a six x cubed. Then we go over here, uh, square root of two x times seven, that's going to be a positive square root of 14 x. And then over here, we're gonna have square root times negative, so that's gonna be a negative square root. And two times two is going to be a four, and x times x cubed is going to be a x to the fourth. Okay, a couple things that we had, and let me actually write down those rules over here. So this is what we're basically working on, in this case, when we're multiplying our radicals. Now, the next thing we need to understand is actually how to like simplify here the square root. So just remember, when you have the square root of something squared, right, that is just simply going to be your a. All right, so what we want to be able to identify is see if we can break up any of these values into square numbers or square variables. So for 21, there's no square numbers that evenly divide into 21. I can't break that up any further. So therefore, that is going to be non-simplified. Over here, you might say, well, there's nothing I can do with a six, but this is x cubed, it's not x squared. However, watch this. See what I did here? What I did is I rewrote an x cubed as an x squared times x. Now, why would I do that? Well, the cool thing is with this property, just like how we can multiply the square root of a times square root of b to give us the square root of a times b, we can also take the product under a radical and separate it into their own square roots. So the square root of a times b is the same thing as square root of a times square root of b. So what that means here is I can rewrite the square root of six times x times x squared. I can rewrite that as the square root of six times the square root of x times the square root of x squared. Now again, remember, what do we know about the square root of x squared, right? a squared, that's going to be an a. So there we go. We can now simplify that to x, but we'll get to that in the next step. Over here, square root of 14, I can't take any square numbers to go ahead and multiply into there. So therefore that is going to remain the same. So square root of a 14 x. And then over here, I can rewrite this as a two squared and then x to the fourth power you can all rewrite that as an x squared squared. When you're simplifying the radicals with the square roots, you always want to be able to see, can I rewrite my radicand as a square, as a square number or as a square variable? And you can see I was able to do it with my variables. I wasn't able to do it with my numbers, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and see here the square root of 21 minus. Now here, the square root of x squared is just going to be x. So it's going to be x square root of 6x. Over here, I'm going to have a plus square root of a 14x. And then over here, let's see, the square root of two squared is going to be minus a two, and that's going to be an x squared. Now, the last thing we wanna do is be able to see, can we simplify any of these? And for us to be able to combine our radicals, they have to not only have the same index, but they also have the same radicand. You can see these are all different radicands. So therefore, there's nothing we can go ahead and simplify. And that is how you multiply your two binomials with radicals.